everyone. Welcome to the glass breaking demonstration. We're going to be breaking all of the glass that I have in this case here, but before we can do that, I just want to explain to you why our glass breaks the way that it does so that it will make a little bit more sense. And I'm also going to show you as I'm telling you. I'm going to demonstrate with this bottle I have here. Before I started the show, I put a score mark into the glass, so there's already a small scratch on the surface. I have a butane torch here. I'm going to keep the area all the way around the score mark. Let it heat up for about 30 seconds or so. Now, I'm doing this because whenever our glass gets hot, the molecules inside of it that are usually locked in one place are free to start moving around. And when they do, it causes a lot of unevenness in our glass that we refer to as stress. Stress is the main reason why our glass breaks. So this flame I'm using is about 2,000 degrees, so it's pretty hot. It is causing a lot of stress to form in here. We're just going to give it a couple more rotations, and then I'll go ahead and break the glass for you. All I did was give it a gentle tap, so a little vibration and a little bit of moisture caused that to break all the way around where the heat is at. Now this dark screen I have in front of me is called a polariscope. It's a device that helps us see stress inside of glass. So I'm going to go ahead and put this bottle underneath here. You might be able to see some color around the rim where I added the heat, but probably not very well. So I'm going to show you what it looks like as stress is developing within our glass. I'm going to focus my flame on just one spot for a few seconds. You can probably already start to see some patterns of light and darkness coming out inside of our glass. So that right there would be stress. I'm going to leave that in there for a few minutes so you can use that as a reference point. If you like. Now we're concerned with two different kinds of stress, compression stress and tension stress. Compression happens when our molecules are pushing together, so it's going to make our glass stronger. You can think of this foam here, I can push on it all day, but it's still not going to break. And then tension stress is where our molecules are pulling apart, so it makes our glass weaker. If I pull on this hard enough, I can cause the foam to rip. Now we will have both kinds of stress inside of our glass, and I'm demonstrated by pushing my foam into kind of a fan shape. Down at the bottom, I'm compressing it, or pushing it together, so there would be our strength. And up here, it's spread apart in tension, so that would be our weakness. And the same thing happens in glass. No matter how I push this, it's still going to do pretty much the same thing. Now, if our glass cools down too quickly, the stress will remain inside of our glass because the molecules will freeze in place wherever they happen to be at the time. Sometimes they'll be pushing, sometimes they'll be pulling. Now, this is not a good thing because then it makes our glass really unpredictable. It will take a different amount of force in different places to break it. So what we're supposed to do is anneal our glass or cool it down really slowly. Generally, an annealing process takes overnight and it allows those scattered molecules several hours to settle into their new shape and they'll become pretty evenly spaced within our glass. So that way it's a lot safer because it's all the same inside in terms of strength so we have a better idea of what it's going to do. This bottle here was annealed so you can see most of it is pretty clear, just like this first tile I have here. The annealed glass isn't going to show us anything in the clear scope because there's nothing to see. We get rid of the stress. Now, none of these tiles have been left completely unannealed, so I can't really show you what that would look like with one of these here, but I can show you inside of plastic. Now, plastic is pretty similar to glass. It needs to be melted in order to make something out of it, and it can be annealed to get rid of the same stresses, both compression and tension. But usually with our plastic, we don't bother to anneal it, so instead what we're left with is a lot of color under here. Now, it's more vibrant than the stuff I put in this bottle here because it's all over the place. An unannealed glass is really similar. But going back to regular annealed glass, this is what you're most familiar with. The majority of glass that you come in contact with every single day has been annealed for your seat. The second one is also annealed glass, but it's two pieces of it, and it's held together with a layer of plastic that has been used in the center. This is called laminated glass, safety glass. So the plastic in there makes a big difference when it breaks. And then the third one does have stress in it, it's called tempered glass. But the stress in here is more organized. We have rows or grids of stress instead of random waves of color. We put the stress in this one on purpose. First we let the glass cool down, but then we reheat it to a point where it's just starting to get soft again. And then we blast it with jets and cold air. 
we need to be really careful when we're doing this because if the glass isn't at just the right temperature, it will explode when it's treated with cold air because of a thermal shock. But if it is done correctly, then instead of exploding, the outside is just going to cool very rapidly. That forms all of our compression stress on the outside because the molecules are huddling together very quickly. You can think when you're cold, you try to bunch yourself up so you stay warm. So this one's doing the same thing, causing it to compress on the outside, and all of the tension will um, form on the inside when it cools down in its own time. So it's protected by all of the strength on the outside, and our tempered glass is about 10 times stronger than a needle glass. I know this one sounds kind of strange, but we do have everyday uses for it, and there is a trick to break it. Our last piece here is called a bologna vial. It's a pear-shaped glass ball. We make these here, and we leave them in the open air to cool down. They cool on their own in about 45 minutes, so then we have lots of stress. You'll probably never see one of these ever again after you leave today, because it doesn't have a practical purpose, and I think we're the only people that still make them. But it does do something kind of fun that I bet you've never seen before. So we're going to save this one for the end, and we'll deal with the tiles first. Would anyone like to help me bring less today? I'll grab you a free fish. So, you want to come out, Nick? Eh? Alright, so I just need you to put these on. And all we need to do here is pull back in the lever and like that. So we'll start with that one. <laughs> it's always scary the first time. All right, so a neon glass is pretty standard stuff. We've seen this one before in our windows, dishes, and ornaments, if any of those happen to break. So again, most household glass. Now down here, we added a lot of heat to our glass, and that formed stress in there and caused it to break. Here we added a lot of stress by adding pressure. Whenever there's pressure applied to our glass, it bends just slightly, not enough so that we can see it, but the glass will feel it because stress is forming in there. So that's why if you drop a piece of glass or knock it over and it hits something hard enough, then you'll probably end up with that. Now this one is also a milled glass, so it'll be pretty similar, but let's see what the plastic does in there. Keeps us stuck together. Now since the plastic is fused in there, it really can't separate from our glass. You can see it bent on impact, but it can just keep on bending and it's still going to stay stuck together. This has one layer of plastic in between, and we use this for carbon shields. So you may have seen something like this before. If we added more plastic, then we can get bulletproof glass or glass surface to walk on, like the floor that we have right over there. So that's like a reinforced laminated glass. You don't have to be afraid to walk on that. Now with your car windshield, the goal is to make sure that in case of an accident, you stay in and nothing comes flying at you from the front. So laminated glass is perfect for that. So we use that in windshields. But your side car windows and back windshield are made from tempered glass because there we want to make sure you can get out. So let's see what that one does. It explodes kind of dramatically. Now this one's pretty safe. Our ideal glass is going to break off into these sharp and dangerous pieces, so we don't want to use this in car windows. But the tempered glass breaks off into a bunch of cubes with edges that square off naturally. So I can run my finger over the edge and I'm not going to get cut. It also breaks apart pretty easily after it's already been smashed through. So it's a lot safer and it will cause minimal damage to your skin. So that's why you can get out if you need to or someone could get in to help you out. On a less morbid note, it's also 10 times stronger than a neon glass, so it protects the rest of your windows from anything from the outside that might be kicked up as you're driving or that might be kind of fall onto it or blow into it. If you've ever had a crack in your windshield, you know that you have to replace it or else the crack is just going to keep growing. So with tempered glass, you don't have to worry about that. You might not believe me that it's 10 times stronger and you did break it really quickly, but that's because there's a point on the end of this hammer that pierces the compression stress as it hits it, so it gets inside the tension and the whole thing shatters apart. We also use tempered glass in NBA basketball backboards, shower doors, and the shelves in your refrigerator. So basically any place where you'll glass when you snap all right, so this one here, it's a little bit different. What I'm going to have you do with that hammer is lift it up and just smash it out. Be careful not to lift this up too high though because it tends to fly out of the case. But I'll have you hit that two or three times. <laughs> I just want to protect this issue. Yeah, so this one right here. 
is a pretty tough piece of glass. We can smash down on this all day without causing too much damage to it. That's because of the way that it cools down and the stress organizes. The outside is exposed to the open air, and since it just cools down on its own, the outside's going to cool first. So it forms all of the compression stress on the outside, just like our tempered glass did. So it won't break anywhere on the outside. But if we flip it over, then we might be able to find tension stress. We're going to hit it just the opposite end, so it's just as thick there. But since this didn't help me out earlier, I guess you can try this. I'll line that up for you. All you have to do is drop it. And the same piece of glass shatters instantly. All the tension is right on the inside, so a tiny sap is all it takes to shatter it right apart. Alright, so there is a sushi bar to it. And I have a bag for you so you can carry it around. Alright, if you have any questions, I'll be up here for a few minutes cleaning up the big mess. If not, then enjoy the rest of your visit, and please don't break anything else in the museum. Thanks for watching.